This is the female reproductive tract. There are two ovaries where an oocyte will be released from one and will alternate each ovulation. Once released, the oocyte will enter the uterine tube or it might be fertilized. Then if fertilized, it will implant in the uterus wall. In this picture, the oocyte is in the mature graphene follicle of the ovary being prepared to be released. FSH and LH are beginning to increase in order for ov ovulation to occur. The fimbriae is beginning to pull at the ovary to get the ovum to be released. The egg has just been ovulated from the ovaries. It is surrounded by a membrane called the zona pellucida, and surrounding that is a layer of follicular cells called the corona radiata. The sperm will have to penetrate both of these to fertilize the egg. This is an image of an egg which has just been released from the fallopian tube on the first day of ovulation and on the 14th day of the menstrual cycle. It's shown pre-fertilization pre and you can see the corpus luteum at its fullest surrounding the egg. The picture shows a general overview picture of a vagina and its associated parts. It shows the two ovaries and the fallopian tubes and how they interact. It literally only shows a model of the vagina with its components, the cervix, the uterine lining, and the uterus. After intercourse, the 300 to 500 million sperm are eliminated to about 300 to 500 sperm after passing through the vagina. The journey for the sperm is challenging and long as the vagina makes it nearly impossible for the sperm to pass through. Sperm are heading towards the uterus from the cerv cervical canal before reaching the fertilization site. This entire process takes about an hour. This is a diagram of a male sperm. There are four main parts to the sperm. Starting from the back is the tail. The tail is the motor for the sperm as it travels in the female reproductive system, and the tail will break off once the sperm has fertilized the egg. Next is the head of the sperm. This is where a copy of the male's chromosomes are. The DNA fuses with the egg's nucleus once it enters the egg during fertilization. In the tip of the sperm, there is an acrosomal cap. This is vital to a successful fertilization. There are enzymes in this cap that help break the zona pellucida around the egg that is trying to be fertilized. The head and the acrosomal cap are covered by a layer of gunk. Yes, it is called gunk. The sperm will shed this gunk in order to fit through the most narrow region of the fallopian tube called the isthmus. This will be discussed in more detail in the next few slides. This is an image of a single sperm going through the process of capacitation. Capacitation is when the sperm gets rid of the gunk surrounding the acrosomal cap. Fertilization cannot take place unless the sperm has completed this process. It can take up to a total of seven hours to complete. As mentioned in the previous slide, the sperm removed a layer of gunk in a process called capacitation. From here, the sperm has released receptors in its acrosome. These receptors, called the receptors for zona, release special enzymes necessary to penetrate the zona pellucida. When the sperm comes in contact with the egg, <clears throat> the sperm's nuclei goes into the oocyte, causing the cortical granules, which signal the egg has been fertilized so no more sperm can get in. This all happens in the ampulla. In this image, the sperm permeates the corona radiata and the zona pellucida. The sperm then releases its acrosome into the ovum and, the, and cortical granules begin to form. This occurs in order for the sperm to fertilize the ovum. Also, this allows the ovum to begin cell division. In the process of fertilization, you can see the sperm head has not yet united with the nucleus. However, it has penetrated the corona radiata and the zona pellucida. This is due to capacitation, which reveals the acrosomal region of the sperm, which then helps it penetrate and fuse through the corona radiata and the zona pellucida into the oocyte. The corona radiata then disperses and now no other sperm can enter. After the egg has been fertilized, it becomes a single-celled zygote, and it takes three and a half days to travel through the uterine tube. As the zygote is traveling down the tube, the cells within the zygote are dividing into blastomeres. The zygote is now called a morula. By days three to four, the morula is at the entrance of the uterus.
As the zygote passes through the fallopian tube on its way to the uterus, it goes through mitotic division, though skipping the G1 and G2 phase of division. This division of the zygote results in two daughter cells known as blastomeres. The entire division results in a two-cell embryo occurring within 30 hours of fertilization. This is an embryo with 16 cells called a morula. Each individual cell is called a blastomere. Between the cells is a substance that is known as intercellular fluid. The embryo is still contained by the zona pellucida at this time, which is about three and a half days after fertilization. A 32 cell morula is pictured. Notice the fluid that is forming between the cells and beginning to pool. These fluid filled spaces were later fused to form a single large cavity, the blastocele. At that point, the morula becomes a blastocyst. Until then, the morula continues to form and enters the uterine cavity. All of the cells and intercellular fluid are contained to the space by the zona pellucida, growing no larger. On day four of fertilization, the blastocele or liquid of the cell gathers to form a fluid filled sac called a blastocyst cavity. Before day four, some morula was attached to the cell membrane to form a trifoblast. This is an early blastocyst cell on the fourth day after fertilization. The blastocyst has formed to take up half of the egg. The other half is comprised of the inner cell mass. The zona pellucida is still intact. The egg is now floating in the uterine lumen. This is an image of a late blastocyst. The blastocyst is compli comprised in part of the inner cell mass, called the embryoblast, and the blastocyst, the fluid of the developing blastocyst. The embryoblast is located in one pole while the tropoblast forms the epithelial wall of the, of the blastocyst. On the tropoblast are receptor proteins that will be used to latch onto the uterine wall, and it's still floating in the lumen. This is the blastocyst dish, which contains a single layer of trichoblast cells forming the placenta and the inner mass cells eventually forming the embryo. At day 5 to 6, the zona pellicula breaks and a receptor cell is revealed for implantation in the uterus. On day 6, imp implantation occurs. The blastocyst buries itself into the endometrium. There is no longer a zona pellucida and the outer layer of the cell is now called the trophoblast. The trophoblast will eventually develop into the cytotrophoblast, which will progress to be a large part of the placenta. Day 6, six through 7, the embryo implants itself in the uterine lining surrounded by the trophoblast and the blastocyst is buried into the endometrium. At this time, the in situ trophoblast forms in the lining next to the inner cell mass. Seven to eight days after fertilization, the centrophoblast is buried into the uterine wall and begins to produce HCG, a hormone which can be found using an early action over the counter pregnancy test. Also pictured here is the citotrophoblast, which will later develop into the placenta.